When the term femme fatale comes to mind, a picture of a sexy seductress who knows what she wants and how she wants it, trapping her unsuspecting prey into a tangled web of seduction and murder. In this seductress world, a femme fatale is less likely to look like Rita Hayward, but more like your doting housewife neighbor. Such is the case with Miss Nanny Doss, the giggling granny. Born Nancy Hazel on November 4th, 1905, she was an American serial killer responsible for the deaths of 11 people spanning 34 years between 1920 to 1954. Nanny Das was to become infamous in the press and public not only as the giggling granny, but also the Lonely Hearts Killer, the Black Widow, and Lady Bluebeard. I was searching for the perfect mate, the real romance in life, Nanny Das told the police after she was arrested for murdering her husbands. Nanny Das was born Nancy Hazel on November 4th, 1905 in Blue Mountain, Alabama to James and Lou Hazel. Much of her childhood was spent avoiding the raft of her father, who ruled the family with an iron fist. At age seven, while the family was taking a train to visit relatives in southern Alabama, Nanny hit her head on a metal bar on the seat in front of her when the train suddenly stopped. For years after, she suffered severe headaches, blackouts, and depression. She blamed these and her mental instability on that accident. Aptly nicknamed the Giggling Granny, Nanny was always considered an approachable woman. So approachable, in fact, that she married no less than five times. But unlike other sparkling beauties who married multiple times, Nanny's husbands all seemed to have one thing in common, except for one, they were all dead. During childhood, her favorite hobby was reading her mother's romance magazines and dreaming of her own romantic future. Nanny's father forbade the Hazel sisters from wearing makeup and attractive clothing to prevent them from being molested by men. He also forbid them to go to dances and other social events. Nanny was first married at age 16 to Charlie Braggs, her co-worker at a linen factory. With the father's approval, they married after four months of dating. Braggs was the only son of a single mother who insisted on continuing to live with him after he married. Nanny later wrote, I married as my father wished in 1921 to a boy I only knowed for oh, four or five months. We had no family, only a mother who was unwed who had taken over my life completely when we were married. She never seen anything wrong with what she'd done. She would never let my own mother stay all night. The marriage produced three daughters from 1923 to 1927. Both unhappy partners suspected each other correctly of infidelity, and Braggs often disappeared for days on end. Charlie always asserted that he left Nanny because he was scared of her. Good thing, too. He was the only one who lived to tell about it. In 1927, the couple lost their two middle girls to suspected food poisoning. Soon after, Braggs took his firstborn daughter, Malvina, and fled, leaving newborn Florine behind. Braggs's mother died not much later, and Nanny took a job in a cotton mill to support Florine and herself. Das soon moved to a nearby town and soothed her loneliness by reading romance novels. She also started reading Lonely Hearts columns in the local newspaper and responding. It was there that she came across the profile of Robert Franklin Harrelson, a 23-year-old factory worker. They exchanged missives and baked goods and were promptly married in 1929. They lived together with Nanny's two children from Bragg's. Eventually, her daughter Melvina, from her first marriage, found her way back into Nanny's care. However, after only a few short months together, Nanny discovered that Frank was an alcoholic with a criminal record of assault. Yet despite that, the couple remained married for a staggering 16 years. During this time, Das's oldest child, Melvina, gave birth to Robert Lee Hayes. Another baby soon followed, and Nanny assisted with the birth. Sadly, the infant died almost immediately afterward. For her part, Melvina had been exhausted, but just before she fell asleep, she swore she saw Nanny holding her baby and thrusting the hat pin into its tiny skull. 
When Melvina asked her husband and sister what happened, they said Nanny merely told them that the baby had died. They noticed that she was holding a hat pin. The doctors, however, never gave a definitive reason for the infant's sudden death. Melvina and her husband were grief-stricken and began drifting apart. They divorced and Melvina began dating a soldier. On July 7, 1945, Das was taking care of her daughter Melvina's firstborn Robert after she and her daughter had a fight over Das's disapproval of Melvina's new boyfriend. That night, while in Das's care, Robert died of what doctors called asphyxia from unknown causes. Within a few months, Das collected $500 on an insurance policy she had taken out on the boy. On September 15, 1945, Das's second husband, Robert Harrelson, became ill and died. Das later told of him coming home drunk and raping her. The next day, she poured rat poisoning into his corn whiskey jar, then watched as he died a painful death. Figuring it worked once, Das returned to the classified ads for her next husband. Within two days of meeting each other, Das and Arlie Lanning were married. Like her late husband, Lanning was an alcoholic, but not a violent or adulterous one. In 1950, after two and a half years of marriage, Lanning became ill and died. At the time, it was believed that he died of a heart attack brought on by the flu that was going around. He showed all the symptoms, fever, vomiting, stomach pains. With his history of drinking, doctors believed his body simply succumbed to it, and an autopsy wasn't performed. And when he died of what was said to be heart failure, the townspeople supported her at his funeral. However, in this marriage, it was Nanny who often disappeared. But when she was home, she played the doting housewife. Of course, the insurance money wasn't quite enough for Nanny this time. She also torched the couple's home, which had been left to Ollie's sister in his will. The insurance money that covered the house went straight to Nanny. After Lanning's mother died in her sleep, Nanny left North Carolina and ended up at her sister Dovey's home. Dovey was bedridden. Soon after Nanny's arrival, she died. Looking for yet another husband, Nanny joined a dating service called the Diamond Circle Club and soon met Richard L. Morton of Jamestown, North Carolina. They married in October 1952 in Euphoria, Kansas. He didn't have a drinking problem, but he was an adulteress. Before she poisoned him, she poisoned her mother, Louisa, on January 1953 when she came to live with them. Morton died three months later on May 19th, 1953. After Morton's death, Nanny moved to Oklahoma and soon became Mrs. Samuel Das. Sam Das was a Nazarene minister dealing with the death of his wife and nine of his children who had been killed by a tornado that engulfed Madison County, Arkansas. A clean-cut church-going man, he disapproved of the romance novels and stories that Nanny loved so much. Unfortunately for him, Samuel Das had two other flaws. He was painfully frugal and boring. He led a regimented life and expected the same of his new bride. No romance novels or love stories on television were permitted, and bedtime was at 9.30 every night. He kept tight control of the money and gave very little to his wife. This didn't sit right with Nanny, so she headed for Alabama returning only after Samuel agreed to sign to her his checking account. With the couple reunited and Das having access to money, she became the doting wife. She convinced Samuel to take out two life insurance policies with her as the only beneficiary. Almost before the ink dried, Samuel was in the hospital complaining of stomach problems. He managed to survive almost two weeks, recovering enough to return home. In a rush to collect on the two life insurance policies she had taken out on him, Nanny dosed him with as much arsenic as she could get her hands on. On his first night back, Das served him a home-cooked meal. She laced his favorite sweet potato pie with arsenic, and hours later, he was dead. Samuel's doctors were alarmed at his sudden passing and ordered an autopsy. It turned out his organs were full of arsenic, and all fingers pointed the giggling granny. Police brought Das in for questioning and she confessed to killing four of her husbands, her mother, 
her sister Dovi, her grandson Robert, and Ollie Lanning's mother. The giggling granny enjoyed her 15 minutes of fame after her arrest. She joked with the press about her dead husbands and the methods she used to kill them. In 1963, after spending just eight years in prison, she died of leukemia. Strangely enough, Nanny Das had fans and those who still loved her even after confessing to her grisly deeds. Prosecutors never charged Das for additional murders, though it was suggested that she killed up to 11 people. <laughs>